And uh, as you can see, Purdue is um, un moving up fast. And unlike its peers, uh, we're catching up and we're, we're uh, making up some ground. So really happy to see that. Also this week, we, um, the smart money rankings came out. And uh, we were ranked eighth in the country. And that basically is a measure of the uh, first salary of our, our graduates. And then it also looks at their salary 15 years after graduation. And it essentially divides it by the uh, tuition and fees that our non-residents pay. And we rank eighth. We were ahead of all the Ivy League uh, and uh, many of our peers. We're second in the Big Ten behind uh, Illinois. And we'll catch up with them because their tuition is going up fast. Uh, we also, if you look at the resident students, they pay uh, about one-third of what the non-residents do. So we're sky high in terms of the value for resident students. We had a... a Really, of course, the sad loss of Neil Armstrong was a, was a difficult moment for the campus, but it gave us a chance to reflect on his impact. He was all about students. Every time he was on campus, he sought out students, he gave them advice, told them to work hard. Uh, it, it, it really exemplified the values that uh, we, we cherish uh, as Boilermakers. So what, do we, what do we imagine a Boilermaker to be like? Well, Neil Armstrong has is, is got to be one of those proud Boilermakers that we we wish all of our students could, you know, they can't all be like Neil, but they can take characteristics and, and aspire to be like him. Very humble, a very accomplished, and always devoted to the students and the next generation. Uh, we had a, a really interesting uh, opportunity to go out to the National Cathedral, a group of six, seven of us representing Purdue uh, for the memorial a few weeks ago, and that was just a very moving <coughs> event. Many Boilermakers, Purdue was mentioned, I think, three times by speakers. They talked about how he was a, a consummate Purdue engineer, Purdue trained engineer, that, and made references to the fact that his values were so well aligned with, with Purdue University, and it was so important in shaping his future. So that was great to hear. Uh, we're out, uh, we, of course, we have the papers. Uh, Neil Armstrong donated his papers to Purdue, and we're in the process of picking those up. We just learned that there's another warehouse that hasn't been touched for 20 years. We're interested to see what's in that warehouse, but uh, hopefully moon rocks and creatures from <laughs> Hopefully they survive. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> Might be a little dust. But I would encourage you to go to this, uh, uh, this website here, www.purdue.edu slash Armstrong. We've got um, everything associated with the events surrounding uh, the memorial service and all of it. The student memorial that was done the Monday after he passed was just phenomenal. They had about 1,000 students, and they, they organized that whole thing. And the one thing we didn't, they kept asking for different features and have, having, asking the administration to help. And they asked for a, a flyover of uh, uh, jets, and they didn't want uh, any slow uh, warthogs or anything like that. They wanted a fighter jets with a missing fighter uh, mi missing man uh, configuration. We told them we couldn't quite arrange that for, for uh, Monday for a flyover, but uh, they, they were a little disappointed. But everything else they, they managed to, to get. They had the band, they had everybody there. It was, it was really a fantastic uh, event. So I encourage you to look that up if you haven't already. Uh, just a little bit about our faculty. They continue to win awards and be recognized for their work. And I just wanted to highlight a couple because they're, they have to do with the future. These are the P-Case Awards, the President's Early Career uh, Research Award. Uh, given at the White House, and you can see President Obama uh, greeting those who won that award, and uh, two of them are Boilermakers, uh, Ian Kaplan in entomology and Alice Pauley, who's an assistant professor in engineering education. So we we're very proud to have that. Uh, no institution had more than two. Um, we'll go for three next time, but we've had them in the past, and it's really a great recognition for Purdue's future. We also are involved in oh, many of the activities or many of the exciting things happening on the uh, exploration and science front, uh, the uh, recent uh, Curiosity landing, and uh, as, it, as it goes, we're learning more. Today we learned that uh, there was uh, there is direct evidence of water on Mars, and as uh, you saw the paper today. We had a lot to do with that Curiosity landing, and the fact that it was successful, I won't read these in detail, but there are Purdue alums and students who were involved in every stage of that and making sure that was a success. Even in looking at the alternatives, if there were, was a failure uh, during the process, and we had Purdue people involved in that. So it should take a lot of pride that uh, Purdue had a big role to play in that successful uh, mission. Uh, I just wanted to mention a little bit about some of the things that are happening that our generous alums are, are contributing to on campus. You've probably seen we have a few holes in the ground if you go around campus, and a few uh, buildings going up. 
Um, we have, uh, for example, the Lyles Porter Hall. We're starting to build that. Um, and uh, we got a million dollars from uh, uh, Bayou Health, of all places. But people wonder, why, why do we have this IU symbol all over Purdue's campus? We're actually really tight partners with IU School of Medicine and with IU Health. It's, it's, uh, they're great friends, and we collaborate, uh, not on the football field, and certainly not at Mackey, but, uh, <laughs> but everywhere else, we're great partners. And we have a IU School of Medicine um, Center for Continuing ed uh, Education, Medical Education, sorry, not the continuing, uh, where we um, have a portion of the medical degree, IU medical degree, offered on our campus. We're planning to expand that, and they'll be moving into uh, Lyles Porter Hall from the basement of Lynn, which is a pretty dismal location. So we're excited about that. Many of our clinical faculty and operations will move into Lyles Porter. It'll be a great advance for Purdue. And then just a couple of days ago, we celebrated uh, Dilan Hampton's gift uh, to civil engineering, named after his mother and himself. And uh, if you walk by civil um, on the mall, uh, the engineering mall, you'll see the name played up there. And we're very happy to have him, his name and his mother's name up there. It's just a fantastic <coughs> gift, and it will sustain that, that um, department for many, many years to come. We had some Olympic success, and uh, you probably know that, but just to highlight uh, some pretty phenomenal results. Lauren Sesselman uh, won the bronze medal with the Canadian soccer team. And of course, everybody saw David Budaya win uh, both a bronze and a gold. What a spectacular win that was um, for the gold. And Adam Soldati, his <coughs> coach, uh, couldn't contain himself. He was really thrilled. And we've been having a lot of fun celebrating that victory. And it turns out that uh, uh, David is still a student. He's got probably about five more semesters. So we're going to have him on campus. Uh, we're, we, uh, I kind of feel sorry for him because he's mobbed everywhere he's seen. But uh, <laughs> we're trying to protect him. But we're really happy to have him as a student setting that example. and. Uh, uh, really inspiring our, our students for the next five semesters um, as, a, as a figure on campus and as a speaker. Uh, hopefully you'll find a little time to study. Uh, a couple of things, I, don't, I won't again spend a lot of time on these, but these are things that are important to uh, the academic uh, life on campus. For 30 year, after 30 years of discussion, we finally have a core curriculum. And uh, this will further brand Purdue. It'll, it'll give more meaning to a Purdue uh, degree. Right now, a Purdue degree is highly valued. We know that from all of our reputational surveys, everything that, that uh, we hear about Purdue, even when you go to China, you go to India, uh, South America, or anywhere outside of Indiana, <laughs> Purdue degree is uh, extremely well known. People, people have great respect for it. But what we'd like to do is, is further imprint that and make sure that all of our students have a core to their curriculum, certain learning outcomes that, uh, that they will have achieved before they graduate. And uh, we're really excited to see that implemented. That's in process. We're working, as you may have heard, toward a balanced trimester. This is something that uh, will improve the utilization of our facilities uh, and also provide some net revenue, which will allow us to keep tuition down and, keep, and continue to recruit the best faculty. So uh, this is a long process of implementation to go to a full year calendar. But we're really excited about what the, the potential will be. If you think about students who like to do internships in the summer, uh, now they can do them in the fall and the spring and uh, be able to continue their, their course of study in the summer and not lose a step. And so that's, that's one of the main reasons to do this. Big undertaking will take us, we think, about eight years. Mitch Daniels keeps asking us, it's such a great idea, why don't you do it next year? So we're, we're, we're going to have a compromise somewhere in there. Uh, honors College, we're, we've just launched the Honors College. Uh, it's another um, thing we've been talking about for years when we finally got it um, going. Uh, we have uh, over 300, almost 400 students involved this year. Next year will be the official launch where incoming students will be admitted to a living and learning environment for the Honors College. This will help us recruit uh, students, even more of our best students from Indiana, but, but also across the globe. And uh, really looking forward to uh, getting that fully kicked off and uh, seeing that grow. Of course, you, you know that the France Cordova Center the Rec Sports Center will be opening up um, in a few weeks. We're looking at homecoming, uh, $98 million renovation. We have 40,000 students, and uh, uh, they were just crammed into the old center. This will give them a chance to, uh, to stay in shape, which is really important to uh, living a, a complete life and keeping balance. And our students are really looking forward to getting back in. Also, the Center for Student Excellence and Leadership. We have a big hole in the ground on 3rd Street. Uh, this is a student-led initiative. 
Uh, it will provide an environment for student organizations and student support groups to be in the same place where they can sort of cross-pollinate and, and uh, engage each other. We're really excited about the synergies that will come out of having them together. So I'll leave it at that, just a quick update. Things are on campus are uh, moving beautifully. We've, uh, I think we've been able to maintain the momentum. We've got a few months to go before the handoff, but uh, I'm, I'm very optimistic that we won't skip a beat and that uh, Mitch Daniels will be able to come in and keep the ship moving. It's really a train. Uh, on the tracks, uh, and uh, we're, we're looking forward to the, the next couple of months. But thank you very much for uh, for taking the time to come and visit us on campus again. Uh, we're, I hope that your visit has been uh, productive and interesting, and I hope many of you can stay and watch us uh, uh, round up the thundering herd. And we're looking forward to that. One of my goals is to end my uh, my six month presidency with the uh, best winning percentage of any president. Then I'm going to quit. <laughs> <laughs>